In this video I'm going to show you the OEX Compact 4.0 self-inflating sleeping mat. I bought this back in July of 2016 as a kind of upgrade from my cheap and cheerful but not comfortable um, cheap roll mat. It comes in this dry bag. Two straps to hold it. There's also a puncture repair kit inside this bag. Well, there it is. I've not used that, thankfully. You basically unroll it, unfold it. That's your top side with the slight grips on it. The bottom is smooth, so it may it may slide on the tent with a pitch on an angle. Uh, now you just release the valve over here and it will self inflate. I'm showing you this because I plan to walk the Ridgeway at the end of May and I'm looking again at my backpacking gear. My plan was to walk the Ridgeway in May last year, but due to a change in job and circumstances, I kind of found it hard to get the time off and I was looking at going again towards the end of August and September, but the weather was just terrible and that didn't happen. So my plan now is to go at the end of May and I'm looking again at my backpacking gear. I've got a sleeping bag I'm quite satisfied with and I'm now looking at the size of this compact 4.0 mat because it's not very compact in itself. As with most of these mats, I find you have to get the final couple of puffs with your own breath to get it to where you kind of find it fully inflated. Maybe slightly more than that, I'll try one more. The key is to make it comfortable but not too, um, not have too much air in there, otherwise you can damage it apparently. That's, that's okay. I don't want it too firm really. So I'm six foot one tall, I'm a fairly slim build. This for me is a good size. It's fine on the width, the length is good. I could do a small air actually, but oh well, maybe next time. What I'm thinking now is with backpacking in mind that I could probably get away with something that's only a three quarter length. You get these compact mats now. Oh, we actually do one as well. Well, they only sort of come up to about this far. I think that'll be fine, really. It'll save me space on my, my kit and my backpack. It'll be lighter, less to blow up, but they are thinner as well. This mat is 40 millimeters thick when fully fully um, inflated. That's about an inch and a half in old money. The compact ones tend to be about 25 mil or one inch, which is probably, probably okay on its own. Well, I'm looking at either the OEX model or Snug Pack Alp kit and Multimat. They all have compact short versions of these sort of mats, basically. To pack it away again, I start by releasing the valve, like so. Then I'll try and roll it tightly as I go, squeezing the air out from this end towards the head.
that's now released most of the air so I'm going to seal it back up again before it refills and roll it out once more now I'm going to fold it, which way does it go? Uh, does it matter? I'll go this way fold it like this and I'm going to roll it again If I release that valve once more, hopefully I can squeeze out the last of the air. This may not work though. It's my first time doing this since uh, August when I was in the Peak District. So that may not be enough. Let's try it. Let's tighten the valve and put a strap around it. Hopefully, it'll go back in the dry bag. There it fits. You can imagine with a shorter mat, it takes less work to fold it up again. Which I think is quite important when you're backpacking. Let's try and get the air out. That's all you need. Compared to my sleeping bag, this is very much, very close to the same sort of size. There's not really a lot in it. So one of these items can go in my sleeping bag compartment in the bottom of my rucksack. This is the Osprey Atmos 65. And with that inside there, it's pretty much full. So again, I'm thinking a compact mat, save space, save weight, that kind of thing. Because it's here, the Van Gogh Ultralight Pro 100 is a two season sleeping bag, so I can't really beat that unless I'm going to spend a lot more. The dry bag does have two sets of kind of loops here, through which you can feed your um, straps on most rucksacks. Seems to be a fairly standard centre between here and here. The same distance on this pack as it is on the bag. So that would go straight through here. And you could hang it off of your rucksack here like this. Alternatively, what you could do with a hooded rucksack is loosen your straps off here so that gets longer. Is it going to do it? should do. I've got three on this one. No, there we go. And then effectively use that as a means of carrying the load under your hood like that basically. It's a very rough sketchy way of showing it but I think you get the idea. And of course being in a dry bag is going to stay dry and keep your mat dry and everything. Yeah, so I paid £40 for this two years ago. I'm pleased with it. Um, I mean, it's fine with car camping and that sort of thing. If I can buy a more compact mat to do the job, then I will probably do that. Um, my concern with backpacking on this sort of products, this goes for OEX, Thermo Rest, all of them really, is they may be they may be prone to puncturing, possibly. I don't know, I've not seen it myself, but I've heard it's, a written, um, I've heard it's an issue. 
So maybe I should be looking to buy or carry um, a roll mat like this so I can lay that underneath on the ground and give it some protection with the self-inflating mat going on top of the roll mat. It's just a thought at the minute. The downside with these though is that they are, well you can see for yourself, they're considerably larger. So thanks for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe. Um, if you have any thoughts on backpacking with this kind of mat, then please let me know in the comments section. Uh, I've got some more walking videos coming up soon and thanks again, I'll see you soon.